Part two, 11 new rules for writing a book that changes the world. Okay, everybody. So welcome back. Uh, in the first audio, I introduced this uh, idea or reintroduced the idea of what we call bridge books and some of the challenges that many inspirational authors have shared with us in the service of creating content, writing books, and doing meaningful work that changes the world. So all of these rules apply more or less to creating courses, uh, selling services, or creating, you know, ethical, um, uh, you know, services, coaching, things that you want to actually uh, do in the world. But for the limited sort of reference point for this audio, this second part of the podcast, we're going to filter all this through the prism and perspective of writing a book and uh, writing a nonfiction book that is designed to introduce an idea that inspires or invites an experience. As a matter of fact, if you listen to part one, again, we talk about this notion of what we call a bridge book, where the whole purpose of that sort of book is it introduces a, an idea that invites or inspires your audience to actually engage with your work in the world once they're completed or once they finished reading the book. Now, it's true to say that only a small percentage of people will actually want to take that next step when the book is completed. However, if if you write the book with that end object in mind or end outcome in mind, you're going to get a far greater percentage of your readers who are actually going to do the thing that really leads to their rock star result or their transformation the thing that you really offer in the world, your work that allows them to come away from their experience with you and your ex- and your expertise in a way that truly transforms their life. So I've used this analogy before, but it's and this may this may actually offend some people, but I'm going to share it anyway because I think it's a it's a good. Uh, way of describing the difference between a bridge book and an ordinary book. If you are reading about, let's say, a plant medicine like, you know, uh, ayahuasca or something like that, you know, I'm not commenting on whether I think that's a good thing to immerse oneself in or not, but you understand intuitively that you can't have the experience by dint of reading the book. You can be inspired or invited to want to have the experience, but the book itself only triggers, its only purpose is to trigger an insight or an epiphany or something that inspires irresistible interest in having an experience. So I think we all get that, right? We all understand that if you want to have this completely transform, if you want to learn about Burning Man, you can buy a book about Burning Man. But if you want to actually change your life by having experienced Burning Man, you actually have to go to the to the thing in the world. So hopefully that makes a little bit, it draws a little bit uh, of a distinction between a bridge book and something like a memoir or a, um, you know, a cookbook sort of book where you're teaching people how to do something in a very stepwise or sequential way. Those books are the most common books in the, you know, inspirational or self-help uh, section of any bookstore, whether that's in you know the real world or online. And they're also the least helpful books to write, both for your audience as well as for you as the professional. So the focus, again, and I know I'm sort of hammering on this point ad nauseum, but you want to write a bridge book, a book that introduces an idea that inspires and invites or invites an experience. So it doesn't have to do both, but so you could write a book about, let's say, ayahuasca, right? And again, that's not something I'm recommending, but you could write a book like that that inspires people to go have the experience somewhere else, but you don't really benefit from that other than having been the 
original source of the original idea. So you want to be the person who inspires and invites the experience. So you want to actually, you know, have the the place that people can go to experience the transformation. And this again applies to most, you know, most ideas that we're going to be talking about in our community. So meditation, it's the same thing. If you want to talk about transcendental meditation in a book, you cannot legally teach the technique. It is not permissible in the TM community, for an example, to actually teach the technique in a book. It's a, it, it just, it's a category error. You actually have to get a, you know, a, a mantra from the TM teacher. You know, there is a personal interaction that is required by dint of their, um, you know, their rules of, you know, their protocols, right? So we have people in our audience who are writing about uh, meditation or mindfulness, and they understand that if you're writing about mantra-based TM, in you know, you are actually by default writing a bridge book because you can't teach the technique in the book itself. You can only inspire people to want to see you in person to actually have the life-changing experience. Okay, so let's step back from that and let's move to number two. So number one is your book is a bridge. Number two is your job is to make people think differently about a problem that plagues them. So you want to have one core billboard message, something you want to shout from the rooftops or what we call a heroic hook. And and this is what will inspire irresistible interest to your ideal audience in your work in the world. Number th- Rule number three, you need a transformational trigger. This is the epiphany insight, the aha moment, or the, ins- the, the inspirational idea or hook. And you need a transformation turnstile. And this is where you offer a result that leads people to walk out the other side a different person than how they came in. So they're walking out after having experienced your work in the world as a different person. A turnstile also has a clear leader, a clear deadline, a clear number, and a clear outcome. And it also should have a clear before and after moment, right? So people can look back in their lives and delineate the difference between themselves before they met you and your work and after they had the experience with you and your work. So trigger is the idea and turnstile is the experience. Okay, let's go to uh, rule number four. This, or maybe this is five, even I'm not looking at, off a numbered list, just looking off my notes, but T's don't teach, right? So, you you know, and again, this speaks back to the notion of writing a book that invites or inspires an experience, you don't want to write a prescriptive cookbook, sort of step one, step two, step three, step four, step five, and then you're done. And then they're done with you. You want to write something that teases this experience so that you can actually use that as the motivating, you know, animating kind of piece of your whole entire book, right? So, you know, the everything should lead to this end outcome where you're asking your reader to do something when they're completed, right? So, um, rule number six is what we call the four T's. And this is a, just a simple shortcut for getting very clear about the reason you're writing the book. It's title, type, target, and transformation. Title is the title of the book. Target or type is the type of book it is. Target is the audience that you you need to uh, reach to succeed. And transformation is, again, what you offer um, you know at the end of the book that allows people to have this sort of, you know, before and after moment. And then the other piece of of this exercise is what we call the differentiation declaration. And this is where you are articulating in clear language what it is different 
that you do relative to to others, right? So unlike other books on dot, 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 or unlike other teachers of X, Y, and Z, this is my unique process or idea or perspective or paradigm, right? So the four T's, title type, target, and transformation, and then the unlike other uh, exercise, the differentiation declaration follows that immediately and it gets you very, very clear very, very quickly on exactly what you need to succeed. I will also say that um, there are many really useful exercises like this one that you can do that are very clarifying and very eye-opening for those of us who struggle with procrastination or sort of, you know, kind of not knowing exactly what to write, who to write for, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All right, rule I'm I'm losing track of the numbers. Like I said, I don't have all of them uh, numbered on my notepad, so I'm just going to read the next rule, which is uh, keep it short and take advantage of the dopamine dump that's associated with people finishing your work. Most people don't finish anything. Most people just don't uh, complete what they start. So there's a completion bias that people will associate with you and appreciate by dint of having finished your book. And when you keep it short, you're actually kind of in, in, a, in an ethical way, you're programming people to associate finishing something with you and actually coming, you know, like completing something, especially for folks who struggle with, you know, kind of following through, you're going to bias them to you and your work and your words. And they're also obviously going to be much more likely to click through at the end, you know, to take that end experience um, with you because if they don't get to the end, they can't really click through uh, at the end, right? It just makes sense. So keeping things short is super, super uh, important. Don't write an outline. This is a new rule. Write a content cornerstone instead. And I'm going to cover this in another uh, podcast episode in much more detail, uh, but you want to write the 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 enemy of most authors is this endless outline that just it's this co- just continuous never ending document that you think you need to succeed as an author. Instead, what a content cornerstone does is it creates this master document that details and describes all of the things that you know in your niche, in your market, in your area of expertise, all the things that you care about, all the things that you're passionate about, and it creates silos or buckets around your knowledge in a sense that um, it, you know, you can see how many books you have in you rather than just the, the one that you think you got to write now. So the content cornerstone, which I'm going to cover with some video examples of how to do this, is key And it actually is the antithesis of this endless outline, which 90 some percent of authors that I see struggle with. Okay, finite focus rather than fierce focus. And this also speaks to the same idea. You want to write one book at a time. And, you know, so having a very limited area that you're covering in a single book and you know, is much better than feeling like you're just focused or what people describe as fierce focus. But ultimately, you can be all over the map, you know, having that sort of focus and never actually getting anything done. Having finite focus where you're covering one part of your content cornerstone or one sliver of your outline is far more uh, likely to, to actually result in a finished book. And I like to actually use the sort of the, you know, the old Buddhist uh, idea of what's called a handful of leaves, where the Buddha apparently told his disciples by showing them a handful of leaves, he said, the things I know could fill this forest, but what I'm teaching is just what's in my hand. And he had just a small handful of leaves. So it wasn't that he was teaching everything that he knew to his disciples to give them these real dramatic or or really important life transformations. Instead, he was just teaching them the, 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 the smallest 
little bit of his vast experience, which was akin to the entirety of the forest rather than just the few leaves that were in his hand, and that's what he was teaching them. So use this approach or idea or metaphor as a helpful heuristic for yourself. Just know that you don't have to teach everything that you that you've learned or everything that you've experienced to give people these complete, uh, you know, rock star results. And, you know, rock star results is a cheesy way of saying just a, a real new way of looking at the world. And this is what we ultimately want our readers to have when they're done uh, experiencing our words and our work. Uh, okay, so I, some of these, again, are, I don't want to be repetitive, but commit to more than one. And, you know, the paradox of this approach is is that if you've procrastinated and you've really struggled to write, actually telling yourself, I'm writing three books is a way, it doesn't, it doesn't lead to more overwhelm, it leads to less because you've given yourself this sort of um, out and, you know, this all is of a piece of the core ideas that we've shared above. When you commit to more than one, when you do this content cornerstone, when you, uh, when you, when you tell yourself that you are going to stay very fine with, you're going to stay within this box of, of focus that just teaches the one thing that they need to learn at this particular moment to get this rock star result from your work in the world, right? It allow it, you start to see how much more you have to say. And it, it, it just gets super exciting to realize I'm not writing a book. I'm writing a series of books. So the commit to more than one uh, rule, I used to have uh, something that said, start small, but think scale or start small, but think series. And that's really, especially in 2021, a very useful way of looking at what's working in a very practical manner as well. I mean, Amazon is biasing its whole algorithmic engine towards authors who have a series of books or who've written more than one or who have audiobooks in, in, in addition to, you know, their written books and have, you know, all these different things to offer the world. So, you know, this is the time to, you know, look at yourself as a creator, as somebody who is generating content and inspirational ideas and is doing all and like build this whole thing this publishing platform around your purpose and your sense of passion and your expertise and experience and you will find all of this get super exciting very very quickly i'm going to stop there because i i don't want to get too uh i don't want to cover too much more here in you know just to kind of take my own advice and overwhelm you or everyone listening to this with too much information. This is all in a, a book as well. So if you're interested in reading the book with the 11 rules, you can. it's going to be published in the very beginning of April on Amazon. If you want a, uh, a, a an early copy, just send an email, hi at mindfulmarketplace.com and put book in the subject line and you know, tell me a little bit about yourself or tell us a little bit about you. But I'm happy to send everyone who uh, inquires or asks a free copy of the book that you can read before it's available to the public. Okay, teach what you know, do what you love, wake up the world with your work. Thank you so much for listening. If you have any questions uh, about the podcast or really anything else that we can help you with, feel free to reach out in any format that you're uh, comfortable. Okay, thanks again for listening and have a wonderful day.